Okay, greetings and peace everyone. My name is Neo and I'm here to bring some new info to the people. Okay, here we go with another RLS episode, Relationship Lectures, Lecture Series episode. And this is my third Relationship Lecture Series And what I do is I will um, discuss, watch, and then break down. uh, I will watch a particular film and I'll break down the relationship aspect of the film, the human relationship aspect of the film. And then I'll bring it to you. I'll bring it to the public through my relationship lecture series right here this is the third one if you haven't seen haven't heard my other ones go ahead and check my youtube channel it's the the temp the tyler perry movie uh temptation and then the second one is the movie carnage with jodie foster so i break down the human relationship uh, aspect of it so that people can see what's really going on with modern day relationships and also um, comparing them to the olden days from like this from like the I say from like the 80s and on on further backwards because the modern day relationships as the years go by they get more and more watered down just as humanity's consciousness gets more and more watered down as as a collective and a lot of people aren't able to perceive this because their own they haven't been working on themselves doing self-reflection, self-analysis and self-development so that they can raise their own higher con- their own consciousness to a higher level. But anyways, let me go into some brief information about my background and I'm going to do this for every episode just in case because we we're, we're going to I'm going to always have at least one or more people who stumble on one of my episodes and it's not going to necessarily be the first episode as far as my first the first one that I recorded sometimes they might come on like this one they might come on on the fourth one and the fifth one so I want to do a brief background history each time I do it so forgive me for all of the people who have been Caught, all caught up with me and who's staying in sequence with me okay this all got started um back when well first i'll go into my brief his family history i have there's four in my family as far as siblings i have two older siblings two older sisters and one younger sister i'm the third child of my family and My mother and father divorced when I was four years of age and my father and mother, they both had a rocky relationship and that based on my own studying of their situation and me studying human relationships anyways, I see that that was due to them failing to develop themselves to a high mature adult level before they had children and before they had a relationship before they entered a romantic relationship and this is this goes on continuously throughout uh history and all the way to modern day with a variety of couples and people in general so um they broke up uh my father was in and out of my life all the way up to the age of 16 and throughout the time before 16 he really didn't do any serious fatherly work at all as far as emotional support and really teaching us the ropes of life he took the role mainly as the financial support here and there for my my mother and us and then here and there he'll come in and he'll just do the fun part of Parenting, like just taking us to the arcade, taking us to movies, uh, buying us pizza and wings. And he bought us like uh, game systems every so often. So that's really the, the extent of my father that I really remember in general. 
So the age of 16, that's when I got the spiritual information that he wasn't going to come back into my life at all. So it was up to me to focus on being a man and live my life to the highest degree possible and be a better man than him. And then that's exactly what I did. So I did that. So I was mainly raised by females. Well, my mother and then my sisters, them not having a balanced home. With mature people, they was all over the place too. It, it was chaos. It was it was really chaos. And then just like I, I I I'm about to go into this movie called Joy. I identify with her because she's the most mature of her family. Just like I'm the most mature and balanced, grounded of my family. So it was really my spirit, my higher spiritual self that guided me through all of this mess. So, anyways, jump to that. Got to through all of that, moved out of my mother's house by the time I was 22, 23. And then I got into a romantic relationship with a woman. And after that, with an older woman, which I really prefer older women because I've based on my own studying and experience, a lot of them, I would say. In particular, like 35 and up, a lot of them are a lot more mature than the younger ones. But I can go into that another time, which I should do that, actually. Um, So after that breakup, I sat down by myself in my own apartment and I said to myself, man, okay, what's the next best thing for me to do? And then I said it out loud. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go to another relationship. And then at that time, while in silence, I heard an inner voice, loud and clear, crystal clear, say to me, what makes you think that you're prepared to move to a new relationship? And I said to myself, I was like, yeah, that is true. (laughs) I don't know what I'm doing. And I was never taught this. And just as everybody else, majority of people, they're, they're not taught how to do this relationship thing. And I sat there for a few minutes and I was like, wow, okay, well, I guess I'm just go ahead and start studying. Then I said, "Okay, I got to figure out where to start. And then ever since then. For six years plus, I've been on a rampage, just studying, 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 studying everything that I can get my hands on as far as human relationships Romantic relationships, family relationships, and friendships. And that what led me to what I call I title myself as a human relationship anatomist. I break down analytically, I study, invest and really, really investigate human relationships. And the number one book that got me on the path is the book titled straight talk for men wait hold on let me let me go ahead and grab that it's titled it's titled straight talk for men about marriage what men need to know about marriage and what women need to know about men this book is by martin g friedman that's F R I E D M A N M as in meeting A as in apple N as in not Martin G Friedman or you can say Friedman but it like Friedman to me I go Friedman straight talk for men about marriage and that really was this book right here is definitely the first book that got me on the path and it got me to realize the importance of self reflection, self analysis and self development. And it got me on onto the path. And this book, I would say, is great for men who are already married, but it's also great for men in general. He speaks a lot about marriage and he he goes into talking about how marriage can mature uh, uh, a man, which, which it can, 
But I recommend, like, once I read that part and I read it again for the second time, because I'm still reading it for my second time, I realized that it's important for people to mature before they even decide to get into a romantic relationship. So go ahead and, and check that book book out. And that's where a lot of my information, basic information came from. But after that, there's a lot of uh, psychology today articles, that magazine articles that I read. Then we got, um, let me see, what's the other book? The other book is The Five, oh crap, I gotta figure figure out that other book. What's that book called? Let me go find the book. <laughs> I, for some reason, can't find the book, but the book, it was, it was something titled the, the Five Hidden Secrets to Human Behavior. Or so, something like that. I'll try to remember to put it in the description. If I don't have it in the description for this video here, then uh, write a comment and, and ask me what's the, the name of the book. And I'll put it in there. But anyways, the lady, what she does is she goes and she describes a lot of... She goes about five... She goes through five hidden behavior viewpoints that people... Um, behavior habits that people have that separates them within their relationships. Like the first one is about, is titled, the first chapter is It's All About Me. That's when people go into ego, just like I mentioned in my last um, uh, relationship series, lecture series about the ego. The ego, that's the false human self where people think that the that the world revolves around them. And they're completely selfish. And then there's also some people who are selfless, which the ego can trick trip a person out, trick a person to thinking that they are they are the greatest of the world, too. So the ego is completely a big trickster that a person has to really comprehend. And it's all in their mind. If they're not connected to their heart, then their ego can can just drive them mad. And that's what's going on with a lot of people in relationships they don't have a full comprehension of their own ego and how to control it and that's that so those two books really had a big huge um impact on my studying it was like my launching pad then after that i started to uh go higher and higher up consciously i mean have a higher consciousness and then my my intuition started to develop to a very high level to the point where I can sit down and speak with couples or eat and also be at a distance. And I really know what's going on, the bottom root of the issue. And then that's when I, I incorporate that to my my relationship knowledge. And then it, this just goes on through through years and years and years. And then after that, the, my other study material is movies. A lot of people don't realize that these movies have a lot of information in it. And once I realized that and once I learned how to break down these movies, then I realized that, oh, wait, hold on. These movies are motion picture books. Like if you have the right consciousness, you can take these um, these movies and TV shows, too, because uh, the movie lie, not the movie, but the. The TV series Lie to Me with Tim Roth. That was another um, TV. That was a TV series that I studied. And once I, I closed it and I got done with the the first three, well, all of the the series, the um, series one through three, the three seasons, the seasons. That's what I should say. The seasons. I closed the DVD and I was like, and I looked at. It, I'm like, yo, that was. This is a a, a video book. <laughs> it's a book so you just have to study it it's visual and audio and it's not words but still you can learn from it so i learned a lot through the tv episodes and the the movies so then that's when i just moved on to a point where i was like you know what i have a lot of insights that people need to know that they, that they don't already know right now so intuitively I felt I felt that. And then that's when I, I decided to create these lecture series to spread the knowledge and also have a book titled 
committed relationships, the starting process to the process. And you can go to my WordPress blog at committedrelationships.wordpress.com and check out the two chapters of that book. I, I included two free chapters of the ebook. And I'll do my best to include that in the description. Uh, yeah, in the description. Or you can, if I don't have it in the description, go to committed relationships dot word w o r d press p r e s s dot com, and then look through. It says uh two free chapters, committed relationships book, ebook, and keep in mind that I wrote it. I edited it myself. I went through the editing of it three times myself, but my overall goal was to keep it on a basic level where the average person, where groups and groups of people can comprehend it. I didn't want to go on a high advanced level to where people have to have a dictionary nearby just to <laughs> get through the damn book. And that's how a lot of these books are. But for me, I feel like everybody has one or more relationships in their life. So I wanted to keep it to on layman's terms where people can just read it on through. Oh, OK, boom, I got it. And then that's it. I don't want them to have to sit there and be have an Einstein mind in order for them to comprehend it. So you might see one or more errors in there. It doesn't matter. I didn't want to pay to get no editor. I just wanted to get everything. Well, maybe not everything, but the basics out of my mind of regarding relationships and then get it to the public. Okay, so that's that. Now you have have the background. Now let's get to the movie Joy. This is a breakdown, human relationship breakdown of the movie Joy. This is the new movie that is out as of now, as of January. No, it came out in December, I believe. December 2015. And it's still out right now as of January 16. 16 2016 um at the moment of me recording this audio so if you haven't seen this movie yet this is a huge spoiler alert i will go into detail in a variety of things regarding the relationship aspects so if you have not seen it yet cut this audio off right now and go see the movie and then come back and watch this and listen to this Okay, so now, the movie storyline, it goes like this. Joy is the story, and I have my notes here. I have uh, um, notes that I'm going to go through, so you, you will hear paper. Joy is the story of a family across four generations and the woman who rises to become founder and matriarch of a powerful family business dynasty. Joy stars Jennifer Lawrence and if you guys have if y'all you guys haven't if you don't know who Jennifer Lawrence is she's the one who plays the newest version of Mystique in the X-Men uh, movies the X-Men movies Jennifer in certain well, no, I'll just forget about that. I want to stay on the point. Okay. Jennifer Lawrence in a film written and directed by David O. Russell. Russell. The story is inspired by the life and times of inventor, entrepreneur, entrepreneur, Joy Man, Mangano, Mangano, something like that. M-A-N-G-A-N-O, creator of ingenious designs with over one billion dollars in sales, as well as inspired by elements from the lives of other historical historic business pioneers. And I'll go ahead and. Put the link to the trailer in the description and most of my, if not all of my relationship lecture series that I break down of movies. I'm going to always include the trailer just to give people a reminder if they haven't seen that already. So from here on, look for that first or whenever you want for the trailer to remind you if you need to be reminded. OK, so now early in the movie. It's narrated by her mother, her grandmother. And the early family life, we have 
two parents. She has two parents. Father owns a mechanic business. Mother stays at home. She's a stay at home mom, if I remember that correctly. And her her mother, she really from the time Joy was younger and old and then to the when she was older, she's not worth much as far as mother material. If you really look at the movie and you have Joy, Joy's grandmother, and she seems to be more of a mother figure for Joy than her than Joy's Joy's own mother. And Joy had a half sister, a close friend and a dog. OK, from the start, Joy was born. She was born in a chaotic family, very chaotic parents, highly immature and psychologically lost. Joy's sister never had her own identity and always looked at Joy for almost everything. So starting from the beginning, the father and mother, they never grew up. They were actually grown up children and that this is how it is with a lot of so-called adults. Just like I said in my last relationship lecture series, Carnage, go back to that one too. For my first five lecture series episodes, I plan on going through the basics of human relationships so that you, that you all can Grab that first and then I go on to higher and higher advanced information because I got a lot of advanced stuff <laughs> that people got to that I'm going to share a lot of advanced in human relationship insights that I'm going to share. But I got to set people up first before I move moving on. But anyways, due to them being highly immature, they was not psychologically, emotionally and spiritually Balanced and stable and prepared to even have children and to pass on maturity to the children. So they went through a lot of arguments and a breakup, a divorce that caused them to have a divorce, which that's how it is with a lot of couples. They go through a lot of arguments. They don't know how to overcome and resolve those underlining issues that they have within themselves and then also as a couple and then they end up having a divorce or a breakup for the people who are not married. Okay. What we also have here is the only two people who seem to have real sense of Joy's family seem to be Joy and her grandmother Mimi. And this is where I identify with Joy. Joy's, gr Joy's grandmother, she knew that Joy was going to be something special. And that's how it is with certain individuals in a family. They just have that one thing that's highly unique from the rest of the family. And that's how it is on a higher spiritual level. Those unique ones of a family, those are the souls that are supposed to do something great. And a lot of individuals of a family that they feel it within themselves and or other people feel it that th those people are special. A lot of the, the people, they get caught up in the, the usual human mundane things like having a uh, having a business, creating a business that really doesn't have anything about raising people up spiritually. Um, some people that get involved heavily in sports, basketball, football, soccer, baseball, whatever it, whatever it is, when in actuality, those ones that really radiate something highly unique that's different from their family, they're supposed to be getting involved in something spiritual so that they can, uh, transition this planet into a higher spiritual existence however this type of information most people don't know and don't realize because they get caught up in the human endeavors and they get trapped into the human endeavors and these souls are very powerful souls and they're highly unique creative imaginative and you you might you might know someone in your family that's like that 
highly unique, highly, I mean, highly mature, creative, a lot of imagination. Um, some are artistic, can sing, and can do so much. And some are highly psychic, a high in- level of intuition. These are all, all people that are supposed to be doing something spiritual. And for me, in my situation, when I was from 13 to 16, I knew something deep inside of me that I was going to do something, that I had a mission that was beyond this human realm. And I knew that something didn't make sense, that the, all, the world that was presented to me, it didn't make sense. And I felt like there was more beyond this human realm. But I, at the same time, I was in a family that wasn't on a high spiritual level. They were still on a very low human mundane level where they just go to school, get a job, get into a relationship, a rocky relationship that's not successful, have children. They break up and then they go to a new relationship if they decide to go to a new relationship, have a, have have enough more kids, and then they break up again, go go to work, and then it's just a, a endless cycle of the same old crap going over and over again. So my higher self came through and showed me like, look, you have to pay attention to your family patterns first. And here's the more advanced information that most people don't know this, but I knew this ever since I was 16. But I'm going to give it to you right now. Every family has a family pattern within their family, within their family. And it gets passed on every generation to generation to generation. If a person does not pay attention to this family pattern, the one or more family patterns, if they don't become conscious of it and really analyze it for themselves, And decide if they want to continue with that pattern or not, then they will fall victim unconsciously to that family pattern, whether it be positive or destructive. And this can be a high level of selfishness, immaturity, um, a high level of death in their family, whether they be the ones that, that does a lot of killing or they're the ones who get themselves in destructive situations that gets them killed it's a whole lot a lot of stuff <laughs> it, it, it can go on and on and on so for me i sat down and i looked at my pattern of my family and the number one thing that i would noticed is a high level of immaturity and whenever they get into relationships they break up they have kids they break up and then they just stay in an angry state in a childish angry state and then their relationships really don't go anywhere. And then they, they, as far as the children, well, I won't go on to that. I'll save that to, to later. But I'll say for a lot of, of people who go through family patterns like this where they don't raise themselves up on a mature level and raise themselves up spiritually, couples don't bring in high spiritual children. Very rarely does a couple get fortunate enough to have a high spiritual child who's on a high genius level. On average, if the parents aren't on a high spiritual psychological level before they have kids and throughout the time that the the mother is carrying the child, then they're more than likely going to have Um, Average or below average children Psychologically, emotionally and spiritually They're not going to bring high spiritual In in, in other words, gods Higher, higher geniuses Into their family And that's why if you look at the average The average family There's very There's usually average amount of children being developed Especially now Look at the groups of of families now A lot of the, the the families are producing rugrats now, selfish rugrats. That's why when you really get down to the root of a person who is so-called considered an, an adult, on average, they're still children. And once you get yourself on a high 
a psychological level, you can perceive this sometimes even just by looking at people. And now now that I know what's really going on and all of this information is piled and piled up, I know what to look for without even looking for it. It's just boom. It's just there. And I know who's who's the children. So now it makes it makes things a lot easier for me to decide who to get involved with regarding relationships. So that's that. So let me go ahead and, and move on to that. I can go on and on with that, but that's the advanced stuff. I just wanted to go ahead and put that in there. Um, so like, like I said, Joy and her mother, her grandmother, they was they were really the most mature of the family. They was the most grounded. The grandmother knew that joy was something special so that's why she put in her time and energy into joy and if it wasn't for her grandmother i don't know what where joy would be she might find her own way because there's very few strong souls that come into this human realm that actually are strong enough to override their family patterns their family character and the family DNA programming, because each family has DNA programming and it programs them to behave a certain way. So that's why I say, I say you got to do a lot of self-reflection, self-analyst, analyzation to really perceive this and then decide where you want to go. Because that's what I did. And if, if I didn't do that, I probably would be just as immature as most of my family. Not all of my family. Some of them are still mature, are mature than others but a large portion of them are still on the immature level to where you can't even sit down and have a mature adult conversation with them without them getting offended (laughs) so that's that so that's how it is that's how i identify with joy okay so next i have one major early issue joy watched her parents argue and divorce This is one major, major issue that goes on throughout a lot of relationships. It goes on a lot and it went on in this movie. So this is what's going on when as a child, a child from birth all the way up to one years of age. I really say seven because seven is still um the child's mind is very fertile. It's moldable. But it's documented throughout a variety of books in um, different places that up to the age of one, the child's mind is extremely moldable. So whatever the person sees, hears, and surrounded by, It gets absorbed through the child's mind effortlessly until the child child's mind starts to cement its beliefs and be overall behavior patterns. So one major destructive thing for parents to do is to argue in front of their children And to act like children in front of their children in a negative, immature way. And I say that because when the children experience that, this is all being recorded in their subconscious mind. And this is saying to them that, okay, my parents don't really love each other and it's not going well with them. So... Maybe this is how it's supposed to be in relationships. If a a young person keeps seeing that consistently, 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 and if it's not fixed before a certain age, it's going to be cemented in the child's mind. So that then when the child gets a certain age and they're ready to get into a relationship... The only the only positive results, positive images that they have seen when they were younger regarding their parents or caretakers is destructive energy, destructive images and destructive overall behavior. And I can bear witness to this because this is how my own family were like as far as my sisters. They never seen 
what a mature adult is as far as from the male perspective and also from the female perspective. So the relationships that I have become aware of that they were in. Neither of of um, either sides, either my sister or the male, were mature adults. That's why none of their relationships were successful at all. So I seen this firsthand and I still see this firsthand when I speak with, with couples and when I'm at a distance observing them for my own studying um, my own studying purposes. As, as a couple, I highly advise you to avoid arguing in front of your children. And if you can, before you even argue, do your best to switch it to a discussion. I think I said that in my last lecture, lecture series where there's a difference between arguing and a difference between discussion, uh, having a discussion. Mature adults have discussions Immature, childlike adults have arguments. In the average couple, they have arguments. If they don't have arguments or discussions, they'll just turn their backs and then they'll, they'll just walk out. Whether you have arguments or you walk out the door or you go into silent mode, that does not resolve the underlining issue. So you have to have a discussion and you have to avoid allowing yourself to get hurt by what the other person says, what their issue is that they have with you. You have to be open minded and really look at yourself and really see if you are the cause of it, because you might actually are because it's two sides to two different um, issues. And sometimes it really is the other person who hasn't. Resolve their unresolved childhood issues. So that goes again. You have to do self-reflection, self-analysis and self-development. Find a time to sit by yourself. Go all the way back to your childhood and think about all of the things that you feel your parents did that got you in a negative aspect, in a negative mindset of how life is. And overall, just fucked up your mind. <laughs> That's the best way to say it. Just fucked up your mind. And yes, I do curse and I'm going to keep doing it. Because that's my way of expressing it myself. And also, it's another way to lighten things up. So if you're religious and you got a problem with that, then go ahead and move on to somewhere else if you want to get your uh, relationship information. So that's that. Now to the next thing. Um, the other thing is, it says I have here, Joy built a paper house herself and her father, after an argument with her mother, snatched it from her and threw it to the side somewhere. She, he, he, I remember he snatched it from her while she was playing with it and it somehow got onto the floor. That experience right there for a young child something like that or worse it plays a huge it's, it's a big impact on the child's mind whether the the child the mother and father or the caretakers realize that but it's a huge psychological dent that's what i call them psychological dents that goes into the child mind and it affects them some way somehow throughout their future when it's some, in particular, if it's something that really is highly important to them and then their, their mother or father or caretaker or caretaker or anybody else just come through and they just destroy whatever it is, it affects them negatively and it hurts them. It, it, it really, really hurts them. And for Joy, it didn't look like it really hurt her throughout the movie, but. In reality, like in, in real life, it really, really affects the child. And it might seem like they, they got through the moment at that time, but it, it hurts them. It really, really hurts them. So you got to remember all the way up to the age of seven years of age, 
children are very, very fragile. So you have to be conscious of what you say to them and what you do around them because they pick it up with their subliminally. They pick it up with it subliminally and they, they carry it on with them. So that was negative on her father's and mother's part as far as arguing in front of them and snatching her her um, her artwork. That was her artwork. She really put in work with that. Okay. Um let me see here. I'm gonna skip around to my notes. Joy's Joy's father, Rudy, as I said before, we, we, him being immature, he never truly found himself and thought deeply enough regarding what type of man he wants to be and type of woman he wants to be romantically involved with with. So as a result, he keeps having arguments with his wife and then the, the divorce came. So for Joy, just as I said with my sisters, Joy never seen what a successful, mature, romantic relationship truly is. She didn't see that with her mother and her father and the grandmother. I don't know what happened to her husband joy's joy's uh grandfather if they said it in in there in the movie i didn't see it so go ahead put it in a comment and let me know what happened with her grandfather but the grandfather wasn't around so she didn't really see how much mature her, her grandparents uh are so for her all she had was a destructive Example of what a relationship is. This is how this is why what happened with her relationship, her own relationship, Joy, Joy's own relationship in the future as she grew up and she married. Um, what's what's the dude's name? Um, let me see if I even have it here. Shoot, I usually I usually go right down. The people's names. Yeah, the, the characters' names. And I'm surprised that I didn't do that. Hmm. Anyways. Yeah. Her relationship with the, the Spanish guy. That relationship, based on my own studying, observation, and investigation of relationships, that relationship started the typical way. That a relationship starts either it's usually either the male sees the female first or the female sees the male. They get attracted to each other, physically attracted. And then one or the other, if not both, they they charm each other into liking each other. And neither of them are really doing any conscious Analyzing of the situation of the person and the situation, the other person in of the situation to see if they are relationship material. And again, the average person doesn't know what relationship material material is because they never did their own self-reflection and self analyst analyzation of themselves and self analyzation of what relationships truly are and supposed to be. Besides what they see on TV. No, I didn't mean to rhyme, but <laughs> it just came out. But the average person, they get their information from what they see on TV, which the TV is garbage. A garbage way to get any kind of information unless you have your mind on a certain level to where you can perceive beyond the bullshit that's on TV and in the movies. But if you can't, then you're just going to... You're going to your subconscious mind is just going to soak in all, all of the nonsense and think that it's the way that is shown on TV. Just as I said in my last one about the Carnage movie, if you're not on a high alert and if you're still unconscious to how certain things um, really are supposed to be. Then you're just going to pick up the images, what you see on TV and anywhere else. So anyways, them two, they had the typical relationship. They see each other. They talk to each other. They have a great moment speaking with each other. And then they just so-called connect, but it's really just infatuation. 
child childish infatuation. Effa- That's how it is. How it starts. It starts when you see a person, depending on your consciousness. But the average person, it's a childish infatuation. They see each other and they're like, oh, hey, we have a little something in common. Even if they don't have anything in common, they just like talking to each other. And they're still psychologically on a childish level at this point. And then once they get through this infatuation, it usually lasts a maximum of two years. But for some people, it's way shorter. It can last like three months, three to six months. Or even a month. And then they just get through it. And they're like oh shit. This is not the person that I'm supposed to be with. I don't like this person. Because this person. And they may have said said one little thing. And then boom. That just set set the other person off. A argument starts. And then the argument just keep rolling, rolling, rolling. And then maybe every so often. Romantic moments come through. They're like, oh, okay, I forgive you. When they never sat down and really discussed what's the bottom issue, then they go over it. They they polish it without actually getting the root out. And then they move on. They go through another argument, and that argument might be the cause of the divorce. Boom. Dun, dun, dun. That's how it goes a lot of the time. And this is based on my own personal investigation of human relationships through the studying as far as reading um the breaking down of the movies and also personal experiences like me being in relationships and also observing my own personal families relationships and a variety of other people's relationships so that's that and when i t- tell you tell you that it's the importance of doing self-reflection, self-analysis and self-development and also identifying and analyzing your own family patterns is when Joy got divorced. When she right before she got a divorce, she had a divorce with her husband. When she was arguing with her husband, which her husband was a bum and trying to go through the the. The singer route because he wanted to be a singer. Remember, he wanted to be a singer, which there's nothing wrong with that. But that's as long as you are taking care of your own personal responsibilities and you're not just pushing them to the side, especially if you have if you already have a family and you're already in a relationship where you you live with the person, the individual. If you have everything taken care of, then that's different. You can go ahead and. Go on and pursue your singing career or whatever career on the side. But if you just ditch your responsibilities, then that's when you haven't grown up yet. And this guy right here in this situation, Joy's husband, he hasn't grown up. He still thinks that he's living at home with his mama so he can go off, ditch all his responsibilities so he can go off and live his singing career. So here it is, Joy, she got all of this responsibility on her, taking care of her mother, taking care of her damn, her stupid father. Both her parents are stupid. I'm just going to say both her parents are stupid. And that's how it is with a lot of parents. They are dumb. You got to just just cut the dumb shit and say a lot of parents are dumb. Once you realize that and you have risen yourself psychologically, emotionally and spiritually, you realize, okay. No need for me to ask my parents for wisdom because no goddamn wisdom is going to come from them unless it's on a dumb, mundane level. But other than that, I got the inner wisdom myself. I'm going to go ahead and live my life the way that I'm supposed to spiritually. And then I got to separate myself from them. But I'm going to go ahead and talk about that in an advanced levels about the importance of separating yourself from your family. Because sometimes you really, really have to do this. And that's what Joy failed to do early on. But I'll talk about that another time. So in, other, so in the movie, she stopped and realized she was like, oh, no. I'm living like my family or something like that. She had a realization like I'm living my family life. That's when when I watched this. I watched this twice too. I watched this twice. I went to the movies twice. The first time I watched it, grabbed the basics of it, 
And then I watched it. I wanted to watch it a second time so that I can grab the roots of it. And then that's when I realized the second time I was like, ah, she realized it. She realized that she was living just like her family. And that's because all of those early images of her mother and father together and probably other places, they all got into her subconscious mind. It programmed her behavior and then she didn't perceive when to avoid being with her husband cut him off early seeing that how immature he was so she just ended up going in the same or similar patterns as her parents and then boom a divorce came dun 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 and that's how it is with a lot of people that's why i say you got to do your self-reflection self-analysis and self-development so that you can get your mind right just like i say in chapter two of my book get your mind right before you get into a romantic relationship, father enjoys father Rudy. He even after his first divorce, he still didn't take the time to do his self-reflection, self-analysis and self-development so that he can figure out what the fuck is going on with his himself. And for me, when he got done with his first divorce. The second time of me watching it, I said to myself, boom, right there. That's the time for him to really get his mind right, balanced so that he can mature. Because for me, in my own personal experience, that's exactly what I did after I got into after I broke up with uh, my girlfriend when I was I was like 24, 25, 24, 25. With the older woman that that breakup that I discussed early in the in the lecture here, that breakup after that breakup right there, that's when I realized, OK, this is the time for me to get myself together and develop myself, do my own self-reflection, self-analysis and self-development. And that's what I did. I kept doing it even when I did try to get into new relationships and they failed. I still looked at myself and figured out like, OK, now what did I do this time that caused this so that I can prepare myself next time and to do better next time rather than pointing the finger at the other person of the, the relationship? Well, for me, the other woman, as the average person does, they point fingers. And that's where the immaturity shows the average person who is immature. They constantly point fingers and blame the other individual without taking on self accountability. Being a mature adult means taking on accountability of yourself, self accountability. A lot of people don't realize this. And that shows their immaturity. And a lot of parents and caretakers don't do this either. And they don't realize this. I have a lot of people and a lot of family members who consistently point other fingers and they don't want to look at themselves. So they stay stuck in self-denial. Self-denial highly prevents a person from self-growth, growing to high levels of existence. And that's why a lot of well, I, I would say the average adult, based on my own studying of groups of people and seeing seeing things in a variety of, of situations, the average person is still immature. The average adult is still immature. They haven't got down to the deep, deep roots because they don't know how deep maturity and their psych psyche goes. So they just think that because they have a house, a car, they have they got money in the bank, they have their own um, clothing and they're in a relationship that they're an adult or even if they don't have a relationship, they think that they just have the basics and then they think that they're a mature adult. No, it goes way beyond and deeper than that. That's that's what I say in my last lecture series of Carnage. So you got to really get down to the root of things. And Rudy, he kept jumping to relationship to after relationship, thinking that it's love that he needs. And that, that, that that's going to resolve all his issues, which love is truly what he needs love for himself. After he does self-reflection, self-analysis and self-development, but he still was a child throughout the time. And a good example of his childishness is early in the movie where 
whoever that was that he was living with, I don't know if that was his girlfriend, his his ex-wife, whatever, bro- <laughs> she brought his ass back to Joy's on uh, Joy's family and she said, "Here, take this take this dumb ass. It's not working out. He can't live with me." And then the moment he brought he walked into Joy's mother's room, that's when he started to show his ass. Just like a lot of parents, they start showing their ass when when they get around each other and they never resolve their their bottom issue. So they start arguing over stupid stuff, dumb stuff. And that's how Rudy was arguing with Joy's mother, dumb stuff. And again, because of Joy's lack of self-reflection, self-analysis and self-development, not only did she have a unsuccessful romantic relationship with her husband, also all of the stress that built up due, due to her failing to take a stand and say, no, it's not going to go like this. It's going to go like this, this, this. There was a build up because she had. I'm going to describe her living environment. She had her own her own home. She was paying the mortgage. And fortunately, she had a smart, uh, smart enough father who was smart enough and mature enough to help with the mortgage. That was nice. So she was paying the mortgage, taking care of her immature mother. As her mature, immature mother was sitting there watching soap operas all day like a dumbass. And that's not doing anything to help her psychologically at all. It's just destruction. She had two kids in the home also. So you had the mother, Joy's, mo- Joy's mother in the house. You had two kids. And if you really look at it, and I had, I had to see this the second time. If you really look at it, she had Joy had a, a boy and a daughter but they never really show shown the 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 brother her son look look at it again go look at the movie again if you can or think back on it they would always cover up the son the the, the last time i remember seeing a son was when he was in bed and she didn't they didn't really show it so i don't know what was going on with that but for some reason they didn't want to show the the son and then her daughter and this is going off the topic though the daughter Throughout the whole time, they had her looking like a little boy. So she wasn't feminine at all. Other than the long hair, she she looked like a little boy. So I don't know what the hell was going on with that. But just I peeped that out. A lot of people didn't uh, peep that. But anyways, then she had her immature ex-husband living in the basement. So she had him living in the basement. And now she had her dumbass um, father, Rudy move in 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 there so early on she didn't do her self-reflection self-analysis and self-development to really figure out what the fuck is going on and how she want her life to be and have a goal so that she can prevent all of this crap coming in so she can filter out what's coming in because if she would have did that then she would have said nope my father not living here because he's too immature he's he can get his ass on his on his own he what 40, 50, 60 years of age, he need to get on his own. So, no, he's not coming back in here. All right, mother, we need to get your your ass in either a nursing home or somewhere else because I have to get my family together. But because people believe in this image that is shown throughout society and it, it traps people, is this, oh, it's family. Family is blood. I like to, I have to take care of my family. Blood is thicker than water, yada, yada, yada. They get caught up in that programming and they don't perceive what's really going on. And they don't have the brave enough, the courage to say no to their parents and their family. Because sometimes I'm telling you, family can be a trap for those of us who are supposed to rise spiritually. Because there's small, there's a small group of us souls that's supposed to come in here into this realm and see this is the advanced <laughs> this is the advanced stuff i'm gonna give you a little bit of advanced stuff and i already did but there's a small group of 
us souls that's supposed to come to this realm and we're supposed to rise spiritually. But we have certain distractions that are intentionally put into our lives to lives to keep us from rising spiritually so that we can start changing things on this earth realm. And I'm telling you for a lot of people and in certain situations, your family can be a trap. Family can be a major distraction. It can be a trap. So for Joy, based on me analyzing this, I feel like her family was a trap to keep her from rising spiritually. And it took her having a dream, which I'm happy that she at least had that dream where her her younger self said, look, look, motherfucker, this is what's going on. You used to be brave, used to be brave. And we had a goal. But your dumb ass got distracted by your fucking family and got into that trap. So you got to get your shit, to, shit together right now so we can move forward with our own life. And remember, remember where, where she was laying down on the couch? She woke up and she had she got that big, powerful, feminine en- energy that came through was like, all right, I'm powerful. I'm about to get this shit together right now. And she was like, uh, whatever her ex-husband was, was like, all right, you got to get the fuck out of here. You got to live on your own. You a grown ass man. You got to get the fuck out. But he was like, oh, no, no, no. Why? It's because of this. It's because of this. And that's how a lot of men in general are. But there are some women who haven't matured yet who still are babies and they're looking for a father figure so they find a male whether it be the same age or older to shack up with but i i'm telling you based on my studying and investigating this it's a lot of men who are still mama's boys and they look for women to shack up with so that they won't have to take on the mature adult responsibility This is the perfect example right here with Joy and her ex-husband right there. Boom. It's right there. And I said to myself, "Okay, I got to put this in the lecture. So that's that. Then she was like, all right, Dad, look, you got to get the fuck out of here, too. I've been helping you out. Yada, yada, yada. And then she looked at her daughter, like uh, whatever her daughter was, such and such. I need to use your crayons because I got to draw something out and see, see, boom. That right there, that is the mature adult mindset having right there and doing your self-reflection and self-analysis. And that dream was a prophetic, spiritual, divine dream, divine intervention that everybody gets once or more in their life. But very few people stand the fuck up and get things done. And for me, mine was at 16 years of age. But then I had another one, another um spiritual insight where my higher self said okay look you got to move out of your mother's house if you want to have this music career in which I was searching for a music career too at, at the time and also if you want to get her off your back because some families are monkeys on people's back on a soul's back that's supposed to rise like I said so you gotta you gotta separate yourself from them so the moment I moved out boom I got my own recording studio together got two or three um recording projects done and then that's when i started to raise higher higher up spiritually psychologically and emotionally and then i was able to mature after i left her house and that's what joy didn't do and she never separated herself from her family that was the reason why she went through i feel like largely she went through a whole lot of crap she didn't stand her ground and and detach herself mentally and emotionally from her family but still kept herself physically with her family as far as not ditching them as a whole so i had to get that out okay and like i said she's she, joy has a chaotic family It's really chaos all over the place. There's no kind of mature order to it. And nobody was mature besides Joy, like I said. And what I have here in my notes is Joy's sister, Peggy, as they got older, envied Joy. In the movie, at least, Joy didn't perceive this and left it unchecked. If you look at at Peggy, Joy's sister... 
she would always look at Joy and just just follow her around like a little flunky or or a disciple of Joy, Joy, and would just do what she did or just um just be there at at her side, not contributing to her at all in any way that is helpful so that Joy can move forward. She would just sit there, but as time passed. Peggy got more and more envious and Peggy pegged Joy eventually. <laughs> Peggy pegged Joy's Joy. <laughs> That's what she did. She got jealous and jealous and she saw Joy started to rise, rise and mature and she started to rise psychologically. So Peggy started to peg Joy's Joy and it started to build up. Joy didn't say, all right, all right, nigga. All right, look. Stop this right now. I see that you trying to envy. You envy me right now. You got to get your own life together. So push this. I'm going to push you to the side. If you want to help me help you, then I can do that. But if you're going to just sit here and just envy me and you're going to just start shit, then you can go on with your, your own life. You know, get the hell on with it, with all that crap. She didn't do that. So in the meetings where Rudy and Peggy was not needed. To in the, that uh, proposal, Joy's 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 business proposal. I got to calm down a little bit. I'm getting excited about this because this is the information I have to get out. Joy's business proposal that she she had for Trudy which is Rudy's girlfriend at the time that business proposal it only needed to be between Rudy and Joy there didn't need to be no Rudy in the room and it damn sure did not need to be Peggy in the room at all but Joy she was unconscious she didn't raise herself psychically in Psych psychologically at all to perceive what's really going on for me I would have said all right dad look you don't need to be in this meeting so you get the hell on Peggy you damn sure don't need to be here so you get the hell on right now so this is between me and Trudy if she would have did that things would have been a lot different I feel like things would have been a lot different but she let Rudy in with his dumb ass and you if you would have woke up if she would have woke up and realized that her fucking father is a dumbass. He does not need to be in her life as far as giving any kind of advice. But again, she got into that family trap. Oh, we're all family. I'm your father. That That's a trap. So I'll figure out a time to really explain these these traps that uh, families uh, create. And in particular, parents. They're these programs that they put into your mind that that keeps you thinking that you have to be with them and you have to go to them for advice. Uh, that, but that's at the advanced level stuff. Um, and so, as far as her ex husband, Joy's ex husband, do you remember in the scene where they was in the kitchen? For the first business proposal. It might have been the first. No it was the second one actually. It was the second one. Because the first one I think it was at the garage. Her father's garage. And she had the sheets. The sheets of illustrations of the mop. That was the first one. That's where she should have said. Alright look. I don't need Rudy and Peggy here at all. My daughter can stay. So that she can see. How things go. Because this, this might be good for her in her future. And my ex-husband can stay too. He can see. I can understand that. As long as the ex-husband doesn't say any dumb shit over and over again. But then the second scene where they were sitting down for the business meeting. Again, Rudy was there. Peggy was there. Again, they, don't, they didn't need to be there at all. Rudy was a dumbass. And he stopped doing, he stopped Joy's ex-husband. I don't remember his, his name. I didn't write it down. So that's why I keep saying Joy's ex-husband. But y'all know who I'm talking about. Okay. So <laughs> his ex-husband was listening to her ex-husband. I mean, Joy's ex-husband was listening to Trudy explain the situation with the situation that's going on with this Dallas supplier. And how she's going to get this man, this mop manufactured. 
So George's ex-husband, he was doing the smart thing. He was sitting there trying to think it out. So he, he was sitting there saying like, OK, look, what are you saying? You're saying this, this and this. And he was coming to a conclusion like, oh, hold up. This shit does not make sense. But Joy, not being on a high level, psychologically and mature, she just sitting there just taking it all in. She's not standing up and analyzing this shit. She's just letting it all go. But then Rudy jumped in. He was he was like, look, such and such. Calm down. You're not supposed you shouldn't even be here. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Again, that's the dumbass father not knowing what he's talking about. And he's just trying to figure out a way where he can step in and, and get a little money. That's again, I feel like the reason why Rudy was there is he just trying to chip in on the deal so that he can pull something out. But that's why Joy should have did her self analysis to re realize what's going on and then kept that dumbass father, Rudy, out of the picture. And I don't care if it's your your mother, your father, your sister or whatever. If they don't know what the fuck they talking about, get them out of the situation. Keep that in mind. So think about it before you bring them in anything. Think about like, wait a minute. Do they know what they're talking about? If they don't and if they're still immature and if they're they get too emotional, keep them out of your situation, regardless of what it is. So, in summary, no one is born into a 100 percent perfect family. However, you got to deal with the cards that you were dealt with and figure out a way to flip them to your advantage so that you can rise psychologically, emotionally and spiritually to a high level and move forward. The other thing is you have to be very, very wise with and cautious with what type of family members you did. You consistently associate yourself with, because as I said, they can be a trap and some sometimes you might have to completely leave your family alone in certain situations with, with certain it depends if different people have different situations as far as family members. So that's that. Until next time, go ahead, like, comment and subscribe and listen to this again if you feel like you have to. And it's important to and share this with anybody you feel can utilize it. Thank you.